This week, the big fish takes us to the bridges on the east side of Lake Pontchartrain between New Orleans and Slidell, Louisiana. Angling Adventures owner Captain Mike Gallo, his uncle Dan, and I left the Angling Adventures Lodge early. Speckled trout are staging for their summer of spawning and beginning to seek out water with higher salinity needed for their spawning. Lake Pontchartrain is a food-rich environment, but not a very salty body of water. At the same time, brown shrimp, a key food source for the targeted species of the day, are making their migration to the open and salty waters of our outer lakes, bays, and sounds, and ultimately all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. The migration of the speckled trout and the shrimp time perfectly, and today, using some live shrimp for bait as well as some Berkeley gulp and miscellaneous soft plastics, we found a bunch of hungry fish waiting on us. Mike and I used artificial bait. Uncle Dan had the live shrimp, and regardless of how flawless Mike and I were at presenting our bait, there was little doubt what the fish wanted. I think I need some help. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> the bait may have varied among us, but the technique was the same. Technically called a drop shot by most folks, our lines were rigged with one ounce sinker on the bottom and a small bait hook loop tied on the line. Nothing fancy. Now, many of our local anglers use a jig head weighing between a quarter of an ounce and a half an ounce with their favorite salt plastic for this type of fishing. It's a tried and true method used in this area and has been for a long time. But despite the jig head's history of success in this situation, I honestly believe the drop shot offers several advantages. First, the heavier weight gives you a ton of casting control. Better in the wind, better on the bait caster, easier to aim because you need less force to get the distance, better for feeling the weight hit the bottom, better for controlling the bait for the strike. Two, the weight not touching the soft plastic means the fish's mouth doesn't touch the lead weight on striking. Obviously, this reduces the chance of the fish being tipped off that his prey isn't what he's seeking and spitting the bait. It also allows the bait to slip into the fish's mouth deeper, more easily, making the hook more likely to find a home in the fish's mouth. Three, the weight on the bottom allows you to feel the strike more easily. On a jig head, a fish can short strike the tail and you wouldn't even know it. Because you can keep your line tighter with the one ounce sinker, you can feel every pinfish, baby croaker, and every other bait stealing fish as they peck at your hook. Being able to tell the difference in a bait stealer or the real strike means you don't have to set the hook every time, taking the bait out of your strike zone. Four, ultimately, the best feature is more controlled. You can leave the bait in the strike zone longer. If you get a strike and believe it's a good fish but miss it, the weight sinks faster, keeping you in the same area. You can work the bait more effectively, loosening your line to let it sink, tightening to raise it up, twitching it to give the look of a fish swimming in one place against the tide. You also have the control of how far off the bottom the bait sits. This allows you to work more of the water column effectively. A jig head can rise up, but it falls right back down. The drop shot allows you to provide that jigging action, but also offers more control at keeping the bait at the exact level a fish is most comfortable at striking. Well, one more thing. The train bridge, or trestles as it's called, has a great deal of rocks and debris on either side. Obviously, that's why it often holds more fish and more people fish it. But having the weight on the bottom and the hook above reduces the chance of getting hung up. If you have fished these bridges, you know how often that happens. Now, some other tips for fishing the trestles in particular. This is a train bridge. It is kept covered with limestone rocks. Not sure why, but it has been for decades. Every year, those rocks drop into the water. High winds, heavy rain, train vibrations, hurricanes, tidal surges from hurricanes, all push the rocks into the water. Even the equipment that replaces the rocks from time to time drop rocks into the water. These rocks evolve into reefs, algae grows, little fish show up, bigger fish show up, they all make a home, etc., etc. So learning where the larger reef areas are will definitely increase your success. So for a windy day, you, you're pretty happy with what, what happened? Oh, sure. Good stuff. Um, what do you see for the bridges in the coming days? Oh, I don't see too much change. Um, the little front that went through had some wind, but not enough to dirty the water. So I really see it staying pretty consistent for at least, it's gonna be pretty consistent for at least two weeks. Yeah. At least into mid-May. So if somebody's heading out there the next couple of days, what uh what advice would you have for them? 
live bait on a drop shot. <laughs> that's I think that's fair. <laughs> that's certainly foolproof. You know, if you if you prefer the challenge. Can't see what? Don't drop that thing. Oh, pop, pop, pop your hat up. back as far as you oh. can. Better? Well, he's got to be close enough. There you go. All right. Ready? Yep. Mike, what do you see happening at the bridges for the next couple of weeks? Oh, I don't think it's going to change too very much, CT. It'll generally stay pretty consistent in productivity till mid-May. That's the most saturated I've seen so far. Yeah, we've seen some that's nice the, eggs in them. That's the most saturated I've seen. So you think it'll be consistent fishing? And uh, what, what are you looking for? I mean, where we were, there were clearly a fair amount of shells on the bottom. Um, how important are those shells or those rocks to, uh, to catching fish? Well, we like areas where there's a hard bottom or a shell bottom. It seems the fish prefer those areas. And I would assume we're very similar to the fish. We don't care where we got to go to catch them. And the fish probably don't care where they have to go to feed. So <laughs> Where they got to go to catch them. That right? just seems to be where they like to hang out. And a hard bottom works for us, so it must work for them. Gotcha. What... Uh, we used the drop shot today. Tell me a little bit about why that works so well. I like the drop shot simply because it keeps your bait off the bottom and your bait, either live or plastic, doesn't have the weight of a jig head so that when a fish hits it, he doesn't immediately feel that weight and spit it out. So you, you may get a bite that lasts a tad longer, which obviously gives you more time to set the hook. Yeah, I, I like the idea that we were talking about where it, it also allows that bait to sit perfectly still like a like a, a, a minnow would in, in a, a light tide, just sort of fluttering a little bit. Just I, suspended. It's something you can't do with a jig head. And I still think it's 10 times more sensitive um, using the exact same equipment with a jig head and the exact thing with the drop shot because you, 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 you've got a heavier weight and it's down, but that bait is still up. Whereas with a, with a heavier jig head, you're, you're stuck to the bottom. A and, and I think when that fish hits that jig head, it's, it's more detectable the bigger it is. It's got a lot of advantages. I've been fishing it for years. Right here. It's, it's slowly catching on, but that's okay. So when, uh, when do you think the fish will be in Lake Bourne? There's fish in Lake Bourne now. We just have had windy days there's more open water and less protection. But I've caught trout in Lake Bourne already this year. Um, it's just a matter of having the weather that allows us to get out there. Gotcha. Well, how is the lodge looking for this summer? Looking good as always. As always. I don't know. I, I see expansion. I see roofs over all the porches upstairs constantly working on it trying to get it better see more more boat lifts I see all kind of improvements going on more more beds new beds redone that's right rooms all kind of stuff one stop shop for fishing how many people are you comfortable handling now oh 15 or so with no problem that's nice that's nice and and uh, is there a best time to call early as possible I'll book up pretty quick. Well, I personally will get booked up six months in advance. And then we start getting several of the captains that work with me have trips booked up. But generally, the more advance notice you can give us, the better. We on camera, boy. That's good. Nice to hear that things are popping. Well, I certainly had a good day today, What boss. you need here, bro? You can give Mike Gallo a call at Angling Adventures of Louisiana. All the information is right there on the screen. I'm Captain CT for the big fish, the journey and experience of fishing as much as limits and trophies. I have new posts already in production and hope to build this into a great channel to help you find, catch, and enjoy more fish. I fish Louisiana inshore and near coastal waters the most, with a little fresh and offshore mixed in. 
If you found this informative and helpful, then please like, subscribe, get notifications, make comments, and all the YouTube things you can do here. Then go do a little fishing. You catch them now. I'll catch you later.